That's really nice. Um, can you hear me in the back if I just talk like this and don't use the microphone? So first off, um, I went to a number of schools today and you have brilliant kids. They were very nice. Nobody threw anything. It was a really good day. And I have, um, I've written for a while. I've written full time for about 12 years now. And I've traveled all over talking. I've been to tons of places. In fact, tomorrow morning, not to brag, but it's sort of a self-accomplishment. I do my 2000th assembly and in Cody, Wyoming. I love that. That still makes me feel so happy. So I've had a lot of chance to meet a lot of people, but I love where you guys live. And I think you guys have been kind of holding the secret to yourself, and I plan to tell people. So um, I'm just really excited. It's been so nice to be here. But your kids have been really brilliant. And my, um, I just want to say a couple things, and I'll take some questions and answers. So think of something nice to ask me. But I'll tell you really quick why I'm a writer and what started me to be a writer. I've always wanted to be a writer. I wrote my first book when I was uh, four, actually about four. It was about horses, and it wasn't very good. And uh, But I always wanted to write. And when I was young, my family went on a vacation to Carlsbad Caverns, New Mexico. Some of you might know that. It's an amazing place. It's this big, huge cave in, in New Mexico, and it goes deep into the earth. And I was a little kid, and so we went on this place, and we got to Carlsbad, and we got out of our car, and we entered this cave, and you hike for miles down into the earth. And it's pretty amazing. I mean, you're a little kid, and suddenly you're in this huge cavern going to the center of the earth, and it felt kind of magical. It felt like we were heading down to the center of the earth, literally. And when you get down after hiking a couple of miles, and you get down to the very bottom, as if it's not magical enough, they serve you a little box lunch. It's so fantastic. And I'm sitting there in the middle of the earth, eating these chicken nuggets and dipping them in ranch sauce, and I thought, this could not possibly get any better. And then after I got finished eating, we actually got to take an elevator back to the top, so it got a lot better. I liked that a lot. And uh, I loved it so much. And that night, we stayed at a little, hotel, a little motel in a small town next to Carlsbad, the town's called White City. And uh, it's not much more than like a rundown Dairy Queen in an old motel. And across from the motel, there's a little hill. And on top of that hill is an old broken down Ferris wheel. And the Ferris wheel is chained off with a chain link fence because it doesn't it no longer works at that time. And my family was staying in this motel and it felt like nobody was there. It kind of felt like a ghost town. And we ate dinner at Dairy Queen and when we were done, we came outside and it was a full moon. And I stepped on the door sill. I walked out the door of Dairy Queen with my dad, and we were standing there. And we looked across the street, and that full moon was lighting up that broken Ferris wheel. And my head was filled with all these images of being in the middle of the earth and these caves and caverns. And as if that moment wasn't wonderful and magical enough, my dad leaned over to me and said something that made it even better. He leaned over and said, Two nights ago, somebody was murdered here. <laughs> now, murder's bad, really bad. But for a little kid, all of these emotions came rushing up. It was so amazing, this caverns, this hill, the mysteries, the city, what might have happened. And I raced back into our motel room and I grabbed one of my brother's little coloring books and I flipped it to the back and I started to write on the blank page. I wanted that feeling of what I felt at that moment. I wanted other people to feel that. And I wrote that all down. And the next day we got into our van and we were driving to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we were halfway to Albuquerque from uh, Carlsbad Cavern. There's not much of a drive. It's just brown, just sandy, just desert. But we stopped and we got off the freeway in this little town called Santa Rosa. And um, if anyone's read my Love and Thumps book, the fourth book has a very important part about Santa Rosa. But in Santa Rosa, it's nothing but little scrub trees and dirt and desert. But you wind through the streets and you come to this place called Blue Hole. And it's a little lake. It's not much bigger than this room on the surface. It's a little lake in the middle of the desert, and it's 80 feet deep. And people come from all over the world to go practice diving in it. It's crystal clear, and you can see all the way to the bottom. And the temperature always stays about 83 degrees. It's an amazing little blue hole of water. And we came to it, and it's so clear, and my dad and me were standing on the edge of it, and we could look down. And at the very bottom, you can see two little doors, metal grates. And they're pretty far down, 80 feet down. And we were standing there looking at them. And a gentleman came up and stood next to us and said, do you see those doors down at the bottom of this little lake? I said, yeah. He said, beneath those doors are hundreds and hundreds of caverns filled with water that go on forever. But the doors are locked now. And I said, wow, that's really cool. And he said, a couple weeks ago, some divers went down there, and they never came back up. Now that was sad and horrible. And then the guy leaned over to us and said, that's not totally true. One of them showed up last week in Lake Erie. 
So, I'm not good at geography, but New Mexico is really far away from Lake Erie. So, I could imagine that this diver had this fantastic voyage and went to these amazing caves and popped up in one of the Great Lakes. And I knew right then that I had to convey these feelings. I got back in a car, I filled up all of my coloring books, like my brother's coloring books, my mom's diet book. She wasn't using it. And uh, <laughs> just filled them with words and pages just to make sure I could convey that feeling. And I knew from that moment on I always wanted to be a writer. And I've written since that day. My first book came out, oh, quite a while ago actually. And, and I've always written and wanting to be a writer. And I know my goal is to someday, or to all, every day, connect with readers in such a way that they can experience the same things that I might think or might have been through. And I've had such an amazing time being here today and just meeting with a few of you. And I've told a couple people, you don't always think about it as a writer. This is such a cool perk to be surrounded by the readers and to meet so many people and to have this connection. So I'd just like to thank you guys for coming out, for, for purchasing the right books, and for being the kind of book people. Book people are the best. And I know that that's, that's the kind of people that show up on the library on a Thursday night. So I really honor it. But I would love to. Um, Maybe take some questions and answers if anyone has any. They asked some really good ones today, but sometimes the best thing, yes, with the glasses, please. Um, how many books have you, have you written? How many books have I written? So that's a really smart question. Um, I have, I think Potter Wiki, which comes out next week, is my 13th book. And I have 15 done, a couple more in the works coming out, but it'll be my 13th published book. So yeah, it's getting a lot. Yeah, that's kind of weird. It's been fun. Yes? Is there a different book that I'm writing about? Yeah, I'm working on the third book in the Creature from My Closet series. So the Creature from My Closet series takes classic books that I loved as a kid and with this middle school student's life and it, he has this laboratory in his closet that he had when he was a child. It's not much of a laboratory, it's made with ketchup and mustard and makeup and all the things he used to mix together and all the books he never wanted to read. And those books produce new characters, little characters that come out of his closet and sort of he has to deal with them in his life. And the first two were, the first ones were, of course, Wonkenstein was Willy Wonka and, and, and Frankenstein, yes. The second one's Potter Wookiee, which is uh, uh, Harry Potter and Star Wars. And the third one is done, and that comes out in next year, and it's called Pinocchio. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Really, it's Dracula, it's Dokey, exactly. And I'm working on the fourth one right now, which is called Catfish, which is half Hunger Games, half Little Mermaid. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, yeah. In the blue sleeve, young lady back there, a couple of us. Will you ask it loud? What's your favorite series you've wrote so far? What's my favorite series I've wrote? What a smart question. So, it's hard to choose. I have five kids in my real life. I'm married and I have five kids. And I like them all about the same. Um, but, and my books are sort of the same way. I mean, I kind of like them all the same. They're all sort of goofy, but I love them as well. But um, I think The Creature from My Closet is really a fun series because I get to draw some stuff as well. So at the moment, that's probably my favorite. But Love and Thumps is the amazing big series, and really great stuff's happening, so I love that. I love them all. It's so always fun. Good question. I love that. Yes, in the front row, with the white shirt. White pink shirt. Sorry. I'm, sorry. <laughs> Okay, first of all, so you, your, your first thing was you just said why, which I thought was a great question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I couldn't answer that. The, um, no, why did I make the book Creature from My Closet? I think it's because when I was, when I told the story, and I'll tell it really quick so the parents don't know, but when I, I did not like to read. I was not a reader. And I had a librarian at my school, and she was just obsessive. She had this, she knew I wanted to write. And she knew that if I read, I'd be a much better writer. And so she found this book, and she thought, if I, she thought I would love it, but I didn't want to read it. And she would follow me everywhere trying to get me to read it. She would pop up in the cafeteria and be like, read this book, you're going to love it. I would say, no. She'd come on the playground, read this book, you're going to love it. I said, no. I remember one time she was outside the boys' bathroom. I can still remember it, coming out of the boys' bathroom. And there she was with that book saying, Obert, read this book, you're going to love it. I would say, no. She would be on my bus after school. She was a very much a stalker librarian. <laughs> she would always say, read this, have the same book, and say, read this book. You're going to love it. And I would say, no. 
And everywhere I went, she would always pop up, always showing this book, always making a fuss, and I always had to say no. And I really did feel like I was trapped inside a bad Dr. Seuss book. And I always thought, you know, I will not read that where I eat. I will not read that in your toilet seat. I will not read that on a bus. I will not read that if you make a fuss. I will not read that no way, ma'am. I will not read that, my life rare. Uh, but she would, haunt, she would just she would follow me everywhere. I remember walking to the hall and popping out to a vending machine. She'd just read this book. And then finally one day, and I always said no. And finally one day, I came, I took the bus home. She had not been on it. I got off the bus, walked to my house, opened my front door, and there, sitting at my dining room table with my mom, was my librarian. And she had that book, and she reached out and said, Obert, read this book. You're going to love it. And I really felt like I was busted, so I said, oh, okay, whatever. So I took the book from her, and I read it, and I loved it. And that book was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And ever since that day, that's changed my life, and I've loved to read. And Charlie and Chocolate Factory, and Frankenstein, and Harry Potter, and, and Star Wars, these are things I love. And I wanted these books to get along with each other, to have some sort of purpose and connection. And that's kind of where Creature from My Closet comes from. It takes some of the books I love that changed my life, and in a cool way, introduces them into another kid's life, and mixes them up and makes them to be, makes them to be friends. I love that. Brilliant really question. Should we do another question? Yes, in the old shirt, my friend. Do you... Out of any one of your books, which character would you be? Out of any one of my books, which pilot character would I be? Probably I'd pick Beck, the lead character from the Pillage series. He lives in an amazingly cool manner, and he can grow dragons. I just think that would be a great gift to have. Yeah. Nice question, I like. White flower in your hair. How long did it take you to write all these books? Smart question. How long did it take to write all these books? So most of my books take about six months to write. Uh, um, about five months to write, or five to four months just to write the first draft, another couple months just to revise and edit. The Creature from My Closet it takes about two and a half months to write the, picture, the text, another couple months to do the pictures, another couple months to edit. It's a long process. It's fun though, I like it. Yes? This is going to kind of sound weird if you can't have that. I like weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, like when you're writing this series and that series or whatever, I mean, I'm sure you probably have millions of ideas for different types of things. Do you just sit down and kind of do it like as a rough draft, like I have this idea of this boy can grow a dragon, and then go from there? Or do you have like bits and pieces of little, like, because I, I write stuff, but it never comes together. So I've got like all these different things that I want to put together, but, right. you know, so do you depict it before you sit down and write it, or? Cool, so a writing process, really question, I love that. You know, I've met a lot of writers, which is another cool perk of being a writer, and everyone seems to have a different system, so you've really got to find what works for you, but for me, I am, um, I have just books of ideas that I wrote down as kids. I write it, I've written down as a book. I carry a writer's journal, which is my phone now. I'm constantly writing ideas down. And then I pick, then those ideas sort of rise to the surface as, this, as the time and my publishers need them and what I feel is a good fit. And then I take those ideas and write about 50 pages. And if I like those 50 pages, I keep going and going and try to finish it off. If I don't, I maybe go a different direction. But. Um, I, I, then I do an outline after I have those 50 pages, a clear outline, and it's just so much easier for me. But some people just write from the start to the end without having that outline. Some people do an outline that's as, almost as close to writing a book. Right. So you kind of have to find what really works best for you. And then it's one more time. How did you decide, decipher, you know, like, I'm going, to, this is going to be more into, like children's genre rather than be like adult fantasy type of well, my very first book was series 11 and so it's kind of high fantasy, it's a lot. And, and when I wrote it, I didn't, I, I'm, I'm a fantasy liker, okay, I like fantasy, I like that. But I kind of wrote, I grew up, grew up really loving Roald Dahl, kind of imaginative fiction. And when I finished 11 and I really viewed it as more of like a, a high imaginative fiction kind of series. And it sort of fell into fantasy, it, just, it is. And so, I, I kind of did it by own mistake, and then I, I like writing in that the genre because anything is possible. I can go anywhere. I like to keep it as realistic and funny as possible. But if I can add some elements of like, wow, I never thought that would happen, or that is just so cool, or high on imagination, I'm all for it, and that just makes it fantasy, so. Does that help? No. The most important thing, which I told all the kids I talked to today, and I tell everyone, just finish what you're writing. Yeah. I mean, so many writers, and people can't, can't change the world until they finish that project. Right. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Uh, way back then, the blue shirt. You're being so quiet and patient. How did I find the title of Levin Thumps? So, um, are you saying Levin's not real? Because <laughs> that kind of hurts me. No, I mean, Levin is so real to me. He's been in my head forever. And I always knew um, his name would be Lev. There's a classic book called My Name is Asher Lev. I don't know how many kids read it these days, but I love the name Lev. And so, 
But if you read the entire series of Levin Thumps, in the fifth book, his name, the meaning for his name, and someone here knew that and they already answered that, you were so brilliant. Um, his name and how it sounds and how it spells, the spell has to do with the very ending of the whole entire series. And I just think it's a cool name, Levin Thumps. It's fun to say. Although most people say Levin Thumbs or Eleven Thumbs. I mean, it's, it's not easy to always be right, but I like the name. Brilliant question. I love that. Let's see. Lime green shirt, kind of fluorescent shirt. When did you start writing books? When did I start writing books? I really did write my first book when I was four. But my first, pu I've written my whole entire life. My first published book came out about 12 years, 10 years ago. And that was Eleven Thumbs in the Gateway to Food. So that nine years ago. Great question. Yes. Why do I want to think about it? Yeah. Okay, think about it. We'll come back to you if you remember. I love it. I'm trying to write this. What series are you thinking of writing next? What series am I thinking of writing left next? Well, um, there is a break-off series to the Foo series called Beyond Foo. And book two comes out later this month as well. And I'm working on that series. But I'm, my main focus right now is Creatures from My Closet. I have 12 books in that series I have to do. And so I'm just working really hard on that. But I have a huge, new, big, high fantasy series that starts in about a year and a half. And that's called The World of Door. That's that application I showed you on the presentation there. Very cool. Should we do a couple more? Are you guys okay? I, don't want, to, I want to start signing stuff and not make people mad. For, I have to wait too long. Let's do, let's do a couple more. Um, right here. Thank you for being so... What do you like better, dragons or robots? What do I like better, dragons or robots? It's a deep, philosophical question. I'm not sure I can answer it all in one night. But I think if I had to just go with a quick answer, I'd say dragons. Yeah. Because ultimately, everybody just crush the robots. Yeah. I love that. To me personally, I don't think there'd be anything I'd rather have happen in my life than to be able to fly on the back of a dragon. And I know with a robot, that's probably not too possible. That's why I like writing back. He gets to do that. Yes? And Rob, the book, The Creature from My Closet. How did you think of Rob? So from the book, The Creature from My Closet, how did I think of Rob? So, my name is Ober, but if you were to put an R on the front, it'd be Robert. And I think Rob, Creature from My Closet is probably my most, most autobiographical series, the closest to my life. And so I just thought Rob was a cool short name. It worked really well. Smart. I changed my mind. Let's do one more question. Let's see. Yes. Yes. For the doorknob, for Creature from My Closet, how to, well the doorknob always stays the same, and you can see it on the cover, the doorknob is Beardy, and it's just from that garage, that door that his dad found in the garage shell, and he's always the same, except Beardy smiles and winces or has different facial expressions, but he's pretty important, that's why he's on the cover, yeah, great question. I changed my mind again, one more, yes. Um, uh, um, after the fifth book for Creatures from My Closet, um, it's called Tin Zan. Yes, very smart. All right. And I don't know what six is yet. I think I know, but I don't have a name. I mean, I know what the characters are, I don't have a name for it. Let's do one more. Let's see. Do you remember? Yeah, let's hear it. I love Love and Thumbs questions because I love foo. Um, so why is the world of foo and Love and Thumbs called foo? So it kind of comes from the word fooey, impossible, hard to believe, impossible to believe. And it's sort of Oz-like. When I was growing up and after I started to like to read, I liked the Wizard of Oz books. And foo kind of has an Oz sort of feel to it. I'm glad you remember that question. I love it. Can I change my mind? One last question. Yes, eighth grader here. Um, where did you get the idea for where did I get the idea for Pillage? It really did come from this idea. I was obsessed with the idea. Who here has read the book, The Secret Garden? Yeah. And it's a great book. It's cool. And there's a manor, and there's this cool garden where they're growing stuff. But I always thought, they go into the garden, and it's just like flowers. So I always thought it'd be cool if they could grow something else. And so Beck can grow dragons. And it really did come from my love of the book as a kid, and uh, thinking how awesome it would be to have the ability. I've always wanted to have a dragon. And in fact, if I could grow them, which is what Beck can do, it's just it so fun. The idea I've had for a long time. Great question. You guys have been outstanding and exceptional. Oh, we're going to set up right here. I'm going to set up right here, and we'll just start signing stuff. Do we want to do it? Are we okay with people just lining up? I don't want people to be mad. I want everyone to be happy. I want you to leave. Thank you. <laughs>
Yes, you guys can, yes. In fact, we'll put these over there for one of you. We'll put these over there for us. You know, the sign is also Yeah, they're all your books. Don't do not worry. 